Part 3 begins on December 14, 1974 where Karen is fretting at the hospital after Shane's fatal accident. A doctor approaches her shortly after and tells her that Shane was struck by a hit and run driver and is on the verge of death as he has sustained serious head injuries. Hearing all this, Karen is in utter shock. Meanwhile, at NASA Mission Control, astronauts including Danielle are watching the news as the anchorman introduces the crew of Apollo 24 which consists of Ellen Wilson, Harrison Liu and the head of the astronaut office, Deke Slayton as his guests. It turns out that the aim of the Apollo 24 mission is to retrieve Ed and relieve him of his time on the moon. Moreover, Gordo is risking his career by going to a non-NASA therapist to talk about his trauma. While residing in Jamestown, there it's revealed that Tracy is assigned to go to space with Molly for 14 days to repair satellites in orbit. After his therapy session, Gordo goes home where he is confronted by Tracy about his whereabouts after finding out he didn't go to work that day. Thinking that he was with a woman, Tracy lashes out at him. However, they manage to reconnect a bit when Gordo confesses to her about his therapy sessions and his trauma, trusting her to keep his secret. All of a sudden, Tracy gets a call from Karen who tells him about Shane's situation. In the meantime, Ed continues his surveillance on the Soviets. He tells Weissner and a military officer named General Weber that he thinks the Soviets are building something on the moon. General Weber is sure that the Russians are up to something, while Weissner, not wanting international conflict, decides to stay silent for the time being. Meanwhile, Ed makes his way down the Shackleton Crater to the cave where he discovers that the Soviets have planted some sort of surveillance device to monitor the American ice mining operation. Furious, Ed immediately informs Weissner and General Weber of the situation. Despite the clear territory breach, Weissner tells Ed to leave the surveillance device in place to avoid any global tension. The next morning, the doctor informs Karen that Shane is now brain dead and is being kept alive through a ventilator. He also tells them that it's extremely unlikely that Shane would recover, making Karen distraught. However, she refuses to listen to the doctor and orders Tracy to call the best neurologist in the country, Dr. Weddle. Later at NASA, Weissner, Deke and Margot discuss whether or not to tell Ed about Shane's condition. On one hand, Deke believes that Ed should know about his son's condition, while on the other, Weissner and Margot are concerned if Ed will act out upon receiving the traumatic news. So, Margot decides to ask Karen as it should be her who makes the call. Later at the hospital, when Deke asks Karen, she firmly says that revealing this information to Ed is not an option. Deke asks for her confirmation one last time and after getting the same response, he says his goodbyes and assures Karen that he will bring Ed home. Outside the waiting room, Deke's wife Marge is also present, and she stays back to look over Karen. It turns out that Karen has a scheduled call with Ed and despite everything going on, she decides to talk with him. During their talk, Karen finds it difficult to talk to Ed without displaying any sorts of discomfort. But as Ed asks Karen how Shane's basketball game, the two reminisce about him when he was younger. Before they say goodbye, Ed reminds Karen that he has only 10 more days left before the Apollo 24 crew come and pick him up. Meanwhile in mission control, Margot requests everyone to not say a single word about Shane while talking to Ed, as it will be the best thing that they can do for him. However, Gordo and Danielle, who are also present, stand up for Ed saying that what they are doing is unjust. But after finding out that it is Karen's wishes, they comply. Shortly after Ed gets a teletype message from the Soviets which reads out deepest sympathies for your son, confusing Ed. He immediately asks Gordo what was going on and wonders if maybe the Soviets were monitoring his conversations since he had talked to Karen about Shane earlier. Gordo starts to panic while Ed gets angry, and in a fit of rage he heads down into the mine and starts to destroy the Soviet surveillance device. Meanwhile, Karen walks into the hospital and sees the neurologist, Dr. Weddle waiting for her. Unfortunately, it's revealed that even Dr. Weddle couldn't do anything for Shane, and informs Karen that he has died. This sudden news takes a toll on Karen as she bursts into tears when entering Shane's hospital room. Moments later, Karen rushes to NASA and finally tells Ed the truth leaving him heartbroken. The next episode begins with the Apollo 24 mission with Crew Deke, Ellen and Harrison being launched into space in order to bring back Ed who has been stranded on the moon for 159 days. However, once the Apollo 24 craft reaches space and is in orbit, the thrusters fail to ignite, and as a result, they are also marooned in outer space. Back in space, the crew of Apollo 24 are informed by Gordo that Mission Control has identified a faulty circuit board which cannot be repaired. So, Tracy, Molly and an astronaut named Dennis Lambert are tasked to the Apollo 25 to replace the board, and they decide to launch in two days' time. Meanwhile, the FBI agent, Gavin interrogates Octavio, who is a janitor at NASA and the father of Aleda who Margot is currently mentoring. 
It turns out that Gavin has hard proof that Octavio is an illegal immigrant. Gavin then presents him some Apollo 23 photographs which he found in Octavia's locker. It is actually revealed that he stole the photographs for his daughter as it piqued her interest, but he doesn't mention her name as she might be deported. So, thinking Octavia is working for some Soviet spy, he is arrested and taken away. The next morning, Karen wakes up as she listens to the news which reveals that Apollo 25 has successfully reached the Apollo 24 spacecraft. To ease her nerves, Karen makes her way to Wayne's home to try some marijuana. This leads to the two having a fun conversation about their past which seems to cheer Karen up. In the meantime, the Apollo 25 crew start their repairs while Harrison Liu assists Molly in the installation of the new circuit board. Shortly after, Margot notices something strange going on inside the tank. All of a sudden, the tank pressure spikes and whilst Harrison, Molly and Deke are outside, the rocket booster of the Apollo 24 ignites and zooms off course. As a result, Harrison slides down to the exhaust plume of the engine, killing him. Meanwhile, Deke is connected to the craft by a tether while Molly holds on to the spacecraft with her bare hands. The Apollo 24 drags the Apollo 25 too as they are also connected, and to avoid any damage to either of the crafts, Molly quickly disconnects the tether used to connect the two space modules. However, she suddenly loses her grip catapulting her into outer space all by herself. Molly doesn't panic however and mentions that she has almost no oxygen left in her tank. Meanwhile, Tracy and Dennis are on board the Apollo 25 figuring out how to retrieve Molly while Deke and Ellen on board the Apollo 24 are off the radar, and as a result communication with their module is impossible. On the moon, Ed shockingly comes across a Soviet astronaut at the American mining site. The two look at each other and when the Russian brandishes a hammer, Ed backs away and the Soviet leaves on his rover. Meanwhile, Margot orders Apollo 25 to return home, as she sees very little chance to save Molly. However, Gordo and Tracy firmly disagree on leaving Molly behind and so, she decides to let Gordo take over. In the meantime, Danielle tries to communicate with Apollo 24 but to no avail. Tracy then manages to pinpoint Molly's location, and luckily she is saved. Immediately afterwards, Mission Control gets the predicted trajectory of Apollo 24 only to find out that the craft is heading nowhere near the moon. Back in Jamestown, Ed gets a Soviet visitor who knocks on the door. It turns out that he is running low on oxygen and so Ed welcomes him inside, but keeps him inside the pressurization cabin. For safety precautions, Ed lowers the pressure slowly suffocating the Soviet making him unconscious before taking him inside. The final episode starts on board Apollo 24 where Ellen regains consciousness after Deke calls out for her from outside. The spacecraft is zooming off course and Deke is outside the module still connected to the tether. Unfortunately, Ellen's abort handle to stop the booster is unresponsive, and so she focuses her attention on bringing Deke back inside. She pulls on Deke's cord and manages to safely bring him back only to find out that he has been impaled by a fragment of the rocket after it suddenly thrust it off. Ellen tells him to apply pressure on the wound and tries reaching Houston who remains uncommunicative. Meanwhile on the moon, Ed ties the cosmonaut up and finds out that he speaks English. It turns out that his name is Mikhail, and Ed asks him what he was doing in the ice mine but he doesn't disclose any information. In an attempt to be set free, Mikhail says that his cosmonaut compatriots will be looking for him. But Ed is too smart to know that the Russians have only one rover which Mikhail used to get here. At Mission Control, all of the members celebrate as the crew of Apollo 25, Dennis, Tracy, and Molly safely land back on Earth. Meanwhile, Aleda is in bed and gets a call from her dad who reveals that he is getting deported to Mexico. The scene cuts to Apollo 24 where Ellen switches to manual flight mode and manages to point the spacecraft towards the moon. Afterwards, she uses the last bit of remaining fuel to propel themselves forward to the moon. But according to their calculations, the craft will not make it by a mere 30 feet. Luckily, due to this short boost towards the lunar surface, the Apollo 24 craft shows back on radar, and everyone in mission control celebrates knowing that the crew are okay. Shortly after, Margot explains to Weissner a possible way to use Ed to alleviate Apollo 24's current situation. However, it turns out that ever since Shane's death, Ed hasn't been responding to NASA communications. A while later, Aleda visits Margot in her office where the latter comforts her after learning the news about Octavia's situation. Aleda then asks Margot if she could stay with her for a while, as she doesn't want to live in her current apartment with her father's friend. However, Margot politely says no and tells her that it is a lot to ask for at the moment. Afterwards, Aleda goes back to her apartment and finds the place thrashed 
Her father calls her on the telephone and orders her to pack up her things and to accompany him to Mexico where they will start a new life. However, Aleda doesn't want to leave America and hence lies to Octavia telling him that Margot allowed Aleda to stay with her for the time being. This brings a smile to his face and all of a sudden, Aleda hears police sirens. So, she quickly says her goodbyes and quickly stuffs some clothes inside a bag before leaving. Meanwhile, Deke and Ellen reminisce about their lives and talk about how they fell in love and got married. However, things take a nasty turn when Ellen opens up about her sexuality and her real love for Pam. Deke initially laughs it off but once he realizes that she is serious, he is disgusted, making Ellen regret telling him. Houston finally manages to get Ed on the comms after Danielle makes the lights on the Jamestown base flicker on and off using Morse code translating to a simple sauce. Afterwards, Margot explains to Ed and Mission Control that they have a 33-minute window where Apollo 24 will be in lunar orbit range, and if Ed launches off the surface in the lunar lander, he might be able to get Ellen and Deke some additional fuel to bring them back down to the moon. However, as the lunar lander doesn't have enough fuel, Ed decides to take extra fuel from the old Apollo 15 lunar module, which is still on the moon even after years of its landing. Shortly after, the crew of Apollo 25 arrive in mission control, and everyone celebrates while Tracy runs up to Gordo and kisses him. Meanwhile, Molly approaches Margot and explains to her that Apollo 24's antenna might have broken causing them to have communication issues, but suggests that their short-range radio might be working. On Apollo 24, Deke explains to Ellen how much risk she had put him and the other crew members in because of her sexuality. She tries to explain her own situation, but Deke suddenly lets out a cry of pain and has trouble breathing because of his wound. At Jamestown, McKaylee convinces Ed to let him help with the mission. The episode skips past Ed and Mikhail's successful retrieval of the fuel, and Mikhail returns back to his base while Ed pilots the lunar lander and takes off. Shortly after, Ed is able to communicate with Ellen and Deke via the short-range radio. Unfortunately, it turns out that the Apollo 24 is spinning too much, and as a result is unable to dock his lunar lander to it. Left with no choice, Ellen comes up with a plan for Ed to literally toss the fuel tanks through space to the Apollo 24. Margot approves of the plan and so Ed times his toss and hurdles the fuel tanks over to Ellen. The toss however goes a little wide, and Ellen misses it but she immediately goes after the fuel tanks with a tether and luckily manages to snag the tanks to complete the mission. Unfortunately, as Ellen returns to her spacecraft in joy, she finds Deke dead. The news about Deke's death is quickly spread to Marge who is sitting in the private waiting room above mission control, and she bursts into tears while hugging Karen. Meanwhile, Ed is reluctant to go back to Earth to continue avoiding the grief of his son's death. Ellen however relieves him as commander of Jamestown, and so he has no other choice but to return back, leaving Ellen as the lone American on the moon. A few days later, at a televised press conference from Jamestown, Ellen gets to deliver a big inspirational monologue, reminding us that sacrifices are part of the journey. The episode cuts to Ed finally at home and in Shane's room. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.